Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm Will. I'm joined by my co-host over here, the Grease. Say hello, Grease. Some people say we've never left, Will. We've ne- uh, we haven't left the nook no. in quite some time, and you've been doing some home reno uh, down here. Yeah, you if might notice an echo. If you're hearing a little bit of echo, hopefully I'll be able to get that out in post, but... Grease uh, has ripped up all the carpet down here, which I don't know if you know anything about audio engineering. Carpet's typically a good thing. Dampens the sound. Now we're going with concrete floors down here. But yeah. hey, the bar rolls easier, so that's a plus. Well, we 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 spilled too much whiskey on the carpet. Yeah, well, and we, was, meaning you spilled too much 100%. whiskey on the carpet. 100%. Plus, you have kids and dogs. It got a little grody, so I understand your rationale behind it. Okay, dogs, plural, has like a bad connotation. I have one dog. Yeah, but like that One dog puppies. manageable. Oh, yeah, she spit out 21 puppies and. A year and a half. That's too many, too quick. I don't disagree with you. You're abusing your dog. Well, nope. We, we on the internet. are in process of pulling out of that thing. Pulling out of the breeding. Yeah, Great choice of words there. Uh, so we are down here. So this week you may hear a little bit of echo, but once everything's back in, that should uh, absorb some of that sound. But I can probably take most of it out in post. But you just uh, went on uh, a little vacay action. A couple of them. Well, because last time we recorded we talked about DC, we talked about a little vacay you took, but yeah. in true Greece fashion, double vacay, ten days apart. Yeah. So uh, tell tell us about this one. And actually, I think you you brought us an appropriate pour. I think to discuss this vacay. Oh yeah. Because I'm looking at maybe the most redneck bottle you own. Uh, it's 100. percent In fact, we can go ahead and and share that while yeah. while we talk about that. I've got a uh, state trooper, uh, old beam. A oh. <laughs> wheel just fell off of it. <laughs> I mean, for those of you want listening, if you yeah. heard an echo, yeah. that was the sound of a wheel falling off a police car. And people in the the top of it's off, too. It's fine. It's um, a beam decanter. Is it been opened? It looks like it's been opened. Okay. Well, it's a... Yes, I've opened it. It's age state. I just wanted to make sure it was fine. <laughs> Recently, you tried it? or Yeah. Okay. So... It's age stated, four years oh, old. Oh, yeah. So basically bottled and bought. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's not 100 proof. It's not. It's 80. Yeah. But I'm, I I have high hopes for these. This is the most inconvenient bottle to pour from because it's like a, it's like a ceramic decanter, but on top in the, in where the, where the, uh, arrestee, the perp would be sitting is where, which is appropriate is where the, 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 pour spout is you have to unscrew the cap and then pour it awkwardly like you'd think they'd put the 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 screw cap at at the butt end like right out of the bumper no not this one listen they they were trying to figure out how to sell more whiskey not sell it not because of the quality of the whiskey right yeah or no the quality man honestly they found they looked up online and was like what porcelain knickknacks can we put whiskey in i mean this has got to be 80s right like 1980s i feel like it would say it 1991 is when the china was produced from the regal china corporation wait that's china that's the type of um material like like when you get fine china yeah really yeah genuine regal china 1991 there's a lot of glue there's a lot of lead based paint oh, oh no. in this, this. this has asbestos in it yeah and it's, uh, it says quote the likeness of body design is used under permission by the chevrolet motor division general motors corporation so dude look at the look at the texture of this of this whiskey though this is four years old it's dark for four years it's been uh, soaking and stewing in that i mean it's just been in the dark for yeah. a long time. Sm- it actually smells really good. It, it smells-, smells clean. 1991, I mean. Dude, I need some of that ni- that 91 911. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking, are we going to buy bar passes? Uh, buy. We got to. Yeah. <laughs> How much it? did you pay for this bad boy? I don't think. It's in rough shape, the, the, the yeah. car itself. Maybe 50 bucks. I don't know. That's probably a good deal. Yeah. It's got a faux tax strip on top, which because it's after tax strips were necessary. Oh, it's got a tinge of funky, just a tinge. A lot of vanilla. That's actually pretty good. Oh, 
I have acid reflux so bad because of the punishment that I put my body through the past four days. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about it. Oh, See, I, w- I woke up at 5 a.m. I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning, came downstairs, and just chugged baking soda. I was in so- Baking soda just by itself? How'd you chug that? No, you put it in a little water. Oh, okay. Well, I put a whole teaspoon in like this little... And then shot it. Yeah, trying to kill that acid. Yeah. Yeah, it did it work. It does great. Yeah. Short term. You should have done it before the show. Should have. I thought about it. Well, I was looking for my Nexium, but I hadn't had to have that for like years. But you went to East Tennessee. Yeah, I went to what I did not know was going to be my hometown. Yeah, uh, which is surprising. You should have known. Yeah, well, Pigeon Forge is where Dollywood is. We went to the Dollywood Resort, Dream More. We went there. I took one bottle of whiskey with me, and I am bummed to say that I didn't finish it. You were there for four days? Uh, Three nights. Three nights. So four yeah, days. Three nights. Yeah, four days. Yeah, yeah, we left. Yeah, yeah. We had two days in the parks. Okay. And well, the, I say parks. The park. Yeah. There's one park. Is that enough time to do everything, or, or is it... Was it too much time? Well, when you stay in the resorts, you get like the first hour, like unlimited express pass access. Okay, that's nice. So that's nice. And then your bracelet from the resort gets you five any times. Okay. Throughout the day. So, you so really, we were, I mean, if you, if you stay at the resort, you're going to do everything you want to do. Yeah, you can do everything. Like if you've got a top five list, you're going to hit the top five. List. Right, right. Is no, it, no problem. So I haven't been to Dollywood. Is it a large park? Is there a lot of stuff in it? It is horribly made. Okay. Like but that wasn't my question. As far as the no, well, it's the like layout's a, terrible. It's a yeah, the layout. That's what I'm saying. Like the layout, like it's so easy to be on one side of the of the park from the other. It takes forever to get. I mean, it's hilly. Yeah. Like well, it's, it's in the mountains. It's on the side of a mountain essentially, but clean. Great staff is way cooler. Than were the Disney. were the rides good? The rides are great. They are good. Yeah. Is yeah. there a lot of them? My kids, that was my question that wasn't answered. Yes. There is a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of stuff to okay. do. Okay. You could not do it all in three days. Really? Yeah. You, you, you probably even with your resort access, like with that hour in the five. Well, I'm talking also about some shows and stuff okay. like that. Yeah. The rides. You could you could do all of the rides in two days with your with your ride access, okay. water rides, the kid rides, you know, all that stuff. So you you've obviously been to Disney quite a bit, but um, I, I mean, one we're in the summertime, so Florida's brutal, uh-huh. brutally hot. But if you are looking to go to Disney, you should check out our buddies Airbnb at Airbnb.com, not mm-hmm. NAD. Just our buddy Logan. He's got a really cool house that has a uh, your own pool, game room, like arcade room, pool theater. table, theater. It's a lot of fun. If you're looking to get down to Florida, it's the best way to do it because you you don't have to be in the park every day and still have a good time. And you can still have a Florida vacation. Oh, yeah. But you cl- Saves you're, you hundreds. Yeah, you're right outside the park. It takes maybe 15 minutes to get to to like the parking lots. And I've so. stayed there. Our buddy that we met through whiskey and Casey. the podcast. Yeah. Uh, he's gone a couple times. So yep. Casey, I think Casey might be his biggest referral. Could be. <laughs> I think he, but I know it's because it's so hot and the economy's a uh, little, a little rougher right now that, um, I know he's got opening. So reach out to Logan at Airbnb. Tell him the podcast sent you once again, not an ad, not getting cash for that or anything, but, uh, no, we just, but we do he does high fives. He does like to cut people deals. So, but back to your thing. So you, and the whole point of that is you've done that. You've been to Disney. You've been down to his Airbnb. Yeah. Um, was it a, how would you compare the experience taking a family with little kids to Disney versus this. Um, I the the biggest thing for me is the lack of magic. In, like, in a good way or a bad this, way? No, because the, no, sometimes the magic annoys me. Uh, well, no, like it. There's not like, oh my gosh, emotions. Okay. With it. Yeah, because you it's, and I you go in there and, and you're like, oh, this is cool. You've talked about like a, a Main Street parade one time where I think it was Ariel specifically like 
point made in, eye contact and point at your daughter and the, it was she just had like, a happy birthday button yeah. on and she was like happy birthday and it just she like freaked out and it was like the greatest moment of, yeah. of your dad life up until that point so they that, have it. that doesn't exist at, at dollywood right and at dollywood it's like you know my kids haven't watched dolly parton cartoons sure you know they don't know and then their their IP stuff is like it's like a black bear, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. that has no name, right? And uh, what I think are butterflies, but they kind of look more like fairies. Okay, it's like just these women. It's like a, it's like a, bear, it's like a, tink, it's like a Tinker Bell, but with like butterfly wings. Butterfly wings. Okay, yeah, it's weird. Okay, um, but I mean, did they like it though? The kids, they loved it. Okay, loved. Loved, loved it. Because I'm trying to think, like, I mean, it's from Nashville, what, three and a half hours from here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not that far of a drive, cost effective, uh, like, you don't have to t- get flights and things like that. Right. that it, and I, I assume it, to stay at their resort compared to a Disney resort, exponentially cheaper. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, golly, I mean, it's up there. Is it? I mean, we spent... <sighs> on three nights, the parks and just, we did not leave the resort or the park for food. And we let the kids get what they wanted. I mean, it was probably three grand for two days of the park. Yeah. But I mean, that's still, you're a family of five. Yeah. And the pool was incredible. Yeah. Good. It's like this little lazy river and nice. Nice. It was a lot like, um, have you done the, uh, the beach and yacht club pool at 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 Disney? Disney? Yeah. 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 It's a lot like that, except it's, it's just a smaller version sure. of it, but it was kind of cool. It was just in the middle of the pool. There was just this little strip of concrete and then, it, or like stone. And then how was the dining rushed. experience? there? Okay. Best food at a park ever. Okay. Ever. Well, that's good news. Uh, it's expensive. Like all park well, right, food is. Because they've got you in there. Yeah. But I mean, dude, I had this uh, brisket barbecue sandwich with like some queso on it uh barbecue sauce something else maybe a little onions or something that's in the park it was in the park that's awesome and it was called the big bear something i can't remember Mm -hmm. i text y'all about it but i mean the thing was a monster it was 18 dollars. yeah but it was it was really great right um yeah the barbecue there's great i mean chicken tenders are chicken tenders um, the kids hit those, but I mean, you know, at the resort, like their Philly cheesesteak was incredible. That's awesome. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, at Disney, dude, you, you could do a character dining, you know, somewhere hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars. And it's not great. Garbage food. It's garbage. You're just seeing a a cast member in a, in a duck suit. Yeah. In fact, the only place that I was like, you know what? Good food was the, uh, was in it's oh, shoot. It's, it's in animal kingdom. It's a Donald duck restaurant. It's over there. It's a buffet. It's a character, character dining, character dining. It's got Mickey, goofy, Donald, all that. Um, My favorite that was with character dining is sometimes when you get there and like mm, goofy couldn't make it today. We've got Daisy. Stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, it's a costume. Right. Can just swap out the costume? Was there, did someone get sick in the costume? Is that the, is that the problem we got here? Listen, Will, we have been in the tunnels of Disney. We have seen how many people are down there that if somebody said, hey, anybody can play Goofy over here in 10 minutes? Just walk around the daggum buffet. Yeah. And yeah. no, nothing. Yeah. Well, Sorry. That's, that's great, though. Any other? Okay, so you took a bottle of whiskey. Do they have bars on site? Yeah. Can you yeah. drink in the park or is there alcohol in the park? There is not alcohol in the park okay. that, that I found. Okay. That's so, like magic kingdom. There's no, no alcohol in the park. Yeah. I mean, no beer. Yeah. No wine. That's unfortunate. I'm assuming no cocktails. Well, if there's no beer, no wine, I think that's a very strong assumption. Well, Dolly loved a good whiskey. Yeah. But are there bars in the, in the hotel? Yes. And when I say, dude, an old fashioned was 25 bucks. Shoo. It's where they get you. Yeah. So, so you didn't order any cocktails there. Okay. Lauren didn't either. Like we brought pre-made margarita yeah. and like some wine 
and then that whiskey and i i had an e.h taylor small batch whiskey man it's just cherry like well balanced oak yeah i mean that's just it's such it's in the pocket of just a really great whiskey so you would suggest unless you're wanting to go be a bar fly at dollywood's resort take some whiskey with you a hundred percent dude i can't imagine how much money I did spent. you take cocktails out to the pool yeah yeah that's yeah. great. I mean, it's you just I just put it in a in like a plastic cup. Yeah. Walked out there. Do you take any of your I mean, you're at the resort. You? you can't, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you're sneaking it into the park. No, I know. Did you take any distillers cola? Oh, no, but <laughs> but when we got back from Dollywood, yeah. <laughs> we immediately went to the pool for 6 hours. Of course you did. Yeah. And then the next day for Father's Day, I go and eat Buffalo Wild Wings for yeah. lunch and then we go to the pool for set seven hours. Mm. We shut, we, it was dark. We yeah. shut it down and there was this big storm that rolled in. It was thundering. It was lightning. It was pouring rain. And yeah. of course, all of the dads I was hanging out with, there's like four other dads in the neighborhood. They're freaking cool as crap. All of our kids get along. It's a perfect scenario. We all just run into the pool. That's We're awesome. just throwing kids in yeah. the rain. We're picking them up, holding them above their shoulders and stuff. like. That. It was it was fantastic. But we pulled really hard yeah. for two days in a row, and I'm already out of the 48-pack <laughs> that I bought. That's awesome. Of the Iron Root, what is it? Uh, Fever Tree. Fever Tree. <laughs> Fever Tree Distiller's Cola. Yeah, Iron what's Root? Iron Root? It's a whiskey, I believe. I think so, too. Yeah. That's why I got confused. Um, that's Distiller's awesome. Cola T. Tea tree oil. It's <laughs> fever tree. It's Grease's uh I introduced it, but he's owned it now and tries to say that it's he's like discovered it. Dude, but. I I I I didn't discover it. No. I've actually told Lauren five hundred times. She was like, You got served an ad on Facebook. You're like, no, go but, listen to the episode. I'm like, no. I had never had it before Will brought it to the house and I had it and I was like, This is my summer drink. Mm -hmm. This is this is twenty twenty four summer pour. It really is good. And I ran through it. I do I've been at the pool and people will have like I'll pour it for people and yeah. they'll be like, this is incredible. How do I get and like I'll go on Amazon. I love that you send them to Amazon when you could just say it's in Publix. No. I told him. I said, <laughs> no, it's like, if you want it no. right now, you can go get it at Publix. It's it's like $14 for a four pack or something. I don't like think that. it's that much. 12? It's close. I don't know. A couple bucks of pop. Yeah, that makes sense. Probably 12. Uh, it's probably, yeah, maybe 12. Huh? Yeah. So, but if you get the 48 pack, it's $60. So that's a good deal. Great deal. That's a really good deal, actually. Actually, no way. Hang on. 24. It's 24 for $60. Not as good of a deal. You're saving like 70 cents. Yeah, but per. Yeah, that's what I mean. 70 cents per. I mean, you're $15 off immediately I mean, without even batting an eye. Yeah. All right. right. And so anyway, we pulled hard again. Another reason for my acid reflux. I can hear it in your voice. Um, And, uh, but yeah, oh, I, I'm all out of those. I didn't take any to Dollywood. It wasn't intentional. I just was like, uh, yeah, I don't you should have. I'm just trying to get out of the door. would have been perfect at that resort. Yeah, it would have been. I but uh, I can't imagine the money I saved with alcohol. Uh, just bringing my thousand dollars. I mean, <laughs> I mean, twenty five dollar old fat. I mean, I can do four old fashions right in an afternoon, right? And then what am I going to do for the evening time? Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I mean, it's like, yeah, I spent four hundred dollars on whiskey for two and a half days. Yeah. It'd be it'd be rough, and then not even counting Lawrence. I'm glad. We, yeah, that's a couple thousand tip. dollars. Just take your own booze. Yeah, like that's smart. Even be I'm like, people are ordering like beers, and they're like seven dollars for like a Miller Light. I mean, that does make sense at like a hotel. Oh no, yeah, I mean, that is like the it price. Does. So that it's honestly that seven dollar Miller Light isn't as shocking as a twenty five dollar old fashioned. I would have said like eighteen dollar old fashioned because it's a resort. You know, like right. bacon that cost, but twenty five dollars is steep. Yeah, or probably well liquor. Probably, yeah. yeah. I don't. I didn't even. I didn't even see any of their. I didn't even go into their bar. I yeah, was like, this is pointless. Um, but what threw me off, I guess, with that resort as opposed to like Disney. Yeah, is that uh, when I go to Disney, we fly in, we bus over to the parks, and we do our things. You know, like we're we're going to the parks, we're going to our resort. That's pretty much it. Yeah, we try to cram it all in. Here we had our own car, 
you know, it's not like it's near an airport right. that you can just come right on in or Uber over from. So you have car access. And it's like half a mile away, you've got CVSs, Walgreens, yeah. all this other stuff, Kroger. It's like, what? Dude, you could, for the price of three beers, you could have a case. Right. Yeah, that's true. Like, so I'm just like, like these guys, and two, they, convenience, would, they would only serve two beers at a time. Just like, if you went up there and you're like, hey, can I get six Miller Lights? They're like, I'm sorry, sir. We can only sell you two at a time. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Dolly's got that on lock. Unless she, you get a bucket, though, you don't want six beers at a time. Oh, right. You got to have them ice. Especially how hot it is already. Oh, dude, it was so hot. So hot. So hot. I'm so glad you got a working air conditioning this year. When last year when it was got house? rough? Yeah. Remember? The oh, yeah, because they installed. That's what I mean. Like It feels great in here, and it's brutal outside already. Yeah. Dude, They they we had a two-ton unit in this house, and they rated it, and it was like, yeah, it's supposed to have a four-ton unit. Yeah. Uh, and now it's like you because you only had one unit for the whole house, right? Yeah, yeah. I See, still, I, two, I still, I still do, have. But. I think I have four tons, but it's two units in my house. Yeah, like t- if you combined them, you combined them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we it was Father's Day weekend, so you're hearing this obviously as you do a week delayed, but uh, we sent our kids away. <laughs> we I drove them up. Met, I, I met. just I, I need to know a lot about this because. That's just, that's very different for a Father's Day. Yeah, we hadn't had like, and I'm digging it. I don't think we'd had a t- like time away without our kids with just the two of us since like last July, and that'll take a toll on you. Oh, yeah. and so we just like finally were like, you know what? Let's just send them to the grandparents. My grandparents were like, my grandparents, my parents were like, oh, we, you know. They were like kind of like floating. Maybe we could get together for Father's Day, and we were like, "What if the what about the kids coming to Kentucky?" And they're like, "All of you." And we're like, "No, just them." <laughs> <laughs> and they they bought it. So we met. I met them halfway on Friday, and uh, made the exchange as you do, mm-hmm. and then came back and. I went to like a fly shop in Nashville on my way home and my wife like went and ran errands without kids. And then we went to dinner in East Nashville on Friday night. And then Saturday morning I got up at five and went and met our buddies, Jay and Tim in Kingston Springs. And we went fishing until like two on our kayaks. That's good company. It was a lot of fun. It was beautiful. The morning wasn't too hot. It got it got hot by the end of the day when we were getting out, but it was still just beautiful. You're wearing a full on hoodie. It's a sun hoodie, right? It's made it's made out of bamboo, so it's like lightweight, but it it's like uh, SPF fifty. Like it's made okay. for fishing and being outdoors. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they gr- got those shirts for for seawater too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's basically the same stuff, but this is like it's not that like, um, like nylon polyester uh-huh. like tech fiber right, right, fabric right, right. or whatever. It's like it's bamboo fiber, so it breathes really well, but it blocks the sun. Grease was making fun of me. Well, I was. He's like, Why are you dressed like it's sixty degrees? I'm like, I don't want to get sunburned because I'm an adult. I mean, that's fair. I it it's, was the shirt. Itself you look is not very hot. comfy. For someone fishing in 90 degrees. Yeah. Weather. No, and those shirts are, they're, yeah, they're long sleeve. They have a hood, but they're not hot. The, it, it may be hot outside, but it's not the shirt that's making you hot. Like it, it does a really good job of keeping you shaded and actually a little bit cooler. How and much, also, how much do those go for? Those, those are from Free Fly. Those are like 75 bucks a pop. I said, honestly, that's not bad. It's not bad. No. Saves you from, Skin cancer. I mean, that's listen, priceless. listen, if you get bad sunburn, brutal, and you just looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I could have sold a, or I could have not bought, right? Like a Russell's 10 year single yeah. barrel pick, and I could have gotten that shirt and saved yeah, my And life. they'll like at the end of the season, they'll like, they'll make their light blue like slightly different in the spring, you know? Like they'll change the colors, like, Ever so slightly. Just to get you to get a new one? Yeah, but then they sell off their old stock. For, for You can get, like, end-of-the-year sales, and, like, I'll go to, like, banks and stuff like that, and they'll have them, like, half off. 
So you can like thirty seven fifty. Yeah, you can get a pretty good deal on it. You can stock up. Well, that works for me. Yeah. Anyhow, I'll there, use that. there was a reason I had a hood over. And what's funny is today our buddy Tim, I was talking with him, he's like, man, I got so sunburned on the back of my neck. And I was like, guess who didn't? Because I was wearing a hood. Right. Yep. Yeah. You had, you had a lot of a lot of fabric back there. Yeah. Well, I but had breathable. One, one piece of fabric, but it well, was. Well, it looked like it was bunched up. It, I know it wasn't much time. It, was it looked like it. Anyhow, so that was a lot of fun. And then we went to um, dinner on f- Saturday night. We cleaned the garage out. Compl- like took like four hours, cleaned the garage. That's, which the, ne- is- that's the next level of moving furniture, Will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was. It was we didn't move, move furniture. Setter. We cleaned the garage. It was a good move out. setter. Because <laughs> yeah. I got back from fishing and Samantha's like, hey, do you want to clean the garage with me? I was like, of course I do. Of course, baby. And so we cleaned the garage, which is impossible with a, a four and a half year old boy dude i was trying to set up here tonight like just a camera yeah and a tv and reconnect everything and my kid like literally called my name 20 times for stupid stuff yeah like, well it's like we dumb. couldn't we couldn't leave the two of them in the house they'll beat each other up you know like if we're out in the garage fight, fight? oh yeah and and it's the our daughter that always instigates it always that's great always instigates it and then henry will just like fly at her and then they're just like beating each other up but then they can't not they can't separate themselves <laughs> they can't they're like they'll be like you just have to touch each other uh-huh. like it's so funny because they're inseparable but then they'll just piss each other off and just fight oh my god <laughs> hilarious but so that it's like we can't like say hey y'all stay inside Right. And then if we bring them outside, they're just going to want to run around and, and ride yeah. bikes and do stuff that we have to supervise. Dude, I it's an t- impossible task. So what did we do? We knocked that out. We went to brunch on, uh, on Sunday morning, and then we went and picked up the kids. I can't tell you how many to- how much money we have spent on hiring a babysitter just to sit with our kids while you clean when, when we're in the, <laughs> another part of the house. Yeah, just yeah. doing something. It's, it's a weird, dumb thing that we have it's to do. Weird. It's really weird. But it it, it, it sounds weird and dumb, but it's a hundred percent necessary. It's like here's eighty dollars. Just can you just make sure? That- Which is also weird that sometimes it's things that it's like. We're going to pay someone $80 to come sit with our kids when we could probably could have gotten someone like say it's yard work. Oh, right. right? Just, it's like just, you'll end up paying more to have someone watch your kids so you cannot pay someone to come and landscape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the one that always gets me. I'm like, wait, we've got this wrong. We just need to pay someone to come do this. Then we, I mean, oh, we don't have the fulfillment of, you know, getting our hands dirty and weeding a, a flower bed. Let but, me go ahead and tell you something that's fulfilling. Laying on the couch. 100% fulfilling. Yeah. I mean, dude, if that costs $80, yeah, I'll watch my kids for $80. So we went to this restaurant called uh, NoCo in East Nashville. Never heard of it. And that's not surprising. Surprising. Uh, so, but I had a, oh man, I had, the, uh, I had a couple of cocktails, but one was a old fashioned. Let me pull it up because it was. Oh, I need, I need to talk about my night too. It was too. Did I talk about when we went to the speakeasy in downtown Franklin? No, but you can get to that after I talk about it. All, right, all right, all right, all right. So we did um, at NoCo. And by the way, the food was unbelievable as well. And I'll tell you that in a second. But we went to. Okay, here was the old fashioned. It's called the NoCo old fashioned Wagyu fat washed Angel's Envy smoked orange oolong okay, demerara. Okay, so Wagyu f- fat washed. Yeah. So like. So have you had the? Do um, they take the whiskey and just there's like, like a run it over the fat? There's a process because like uh, have it um, uh, four hundred four kitchen. Yeah, you had the brown butter, um, yeah. old fashioned. Yes. That's a fat wash with brown butter. Yeah, this is a similar process. Chris Kettner would be able to tell you how to fat wash. Tim Gunderman would be able to tell you how to fat wash. Oh, and I thought you were making a fat joke. No, no, Tim, no, I just Tim's mean like they, fat, but that Chris Tyler I mean. would be able to tell you how to do a fat wash. Like it's a, it's okay. a process that you, um, I'm sure it's probably a I'm lot just more kidding, simple. Chris, than, you look great by the way. You do look really but good. So it had that kind of like buttery, fatty viscosity. Yeah. To yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And it's angels envy. Kind so of forgive me, Casey, but I mean, it was a, it was, what they use it had some of that finished 
uh, flavor profile to it. But then also there was uh, great people at a smoked orange oolong demerara was like the syrup. It's oolong is like a tea. So it, I mean, it was just a really flavorful, delicious old fashioned. Yeah. Had that had, it was like, um, you know, it's like a small plates thing. So you order, we had lobster bao buns. Um, what are bao buns? You know, like, like Chinese buns. Oh yeah. 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 Um, we had a, a burrata that was incredible. You get those at ramen places. Those old buns. Yeah, you can get that at a ramen place. Yeah. So maybe it's Japanese, not Chinese. Because ramen would be hey, Japanese. Man. <laughs> you Look at this. You tell me, Will. Korean bacon. Yeah, that looks... It's just like smoke. They had a wood fire grill inside at this place. Okay. It was incredible. So Why this is it? like wood fired bacon. And then this is like a, like a, uh, like a chili paste. Okay. It's a little spicy with it cucumbers had, this was wagyu brisket with that's like a homemade barbecue sauce do you think that that's worth it a wagyu brisket it was incredible okay this is i just i hate looking at wagyu that's been there's no pink or red in it yeah it's but just, this is also this isn't like they ruined a, a steak cut this is still a wagyu cow but the brisket portion yeah so you're not well i mean in the fattiness in there at all yeah brisket's already fatty yeah so it's just another level of fatty for brisket but brisket you wouldn't want to sear like seared brisket would not be tasty right that's not the right cut for that so yes it was a still wagyu beef but then they i mean they had all sorts of delicious things on it i would be scared to death to cook crap a seven dollar steak in my crab fried rice yes please oh it's all good so we had a lot of good tasty things there um 10 out of 10 do recommend also nice touch the next day my phone is ringing while we're cleaning the garage i'm pounding beers because it was so hot outside Mm -hmm. and it's it says noco was calling me like on the caller id mm. and i was like oh no didn't like we leave a credit card or something mm-hmm. you no know, they're just calling to make sure we enjoyed our meal and thank you for coming in our meal yeah meal. <laughs> meal. Is, that, is that how you say meal no i said it wrong and i immediately <laughs> i'm like i don't know why i said meal but <laughs> you I, I, go, I go it. i'm giving it one Two, three, <laughs> cue the grease. Because I know how long it takes your brain to process. Well, no, I was so. I was watching your mouth. I was like, he know he knows that I heard it. Anyhow, he technical. knows. That yeah, I, anyhow, it was a nice touch. Hey, was, what is the speakeasy in downtown Franklin? Amendment eighteen. Amendment eighteen. Yeah, that's the prohibition amendment. And Grease doesn't normally go to bars. No, like maybe no. ever. Well, because I just I'm like I. I I go to Gray's to have a an anthem spirit. I will go to somewhere else. Uh, well, I really like um, the uh, old fashions at uh, Cork and Cow. Like yeah. I'll go there to, or like the Mister Hyde, yeah, or some cool drink like that. I'll go there specifically for a cocktail. I mean, I, I don't really go to places. However, see, but the fact that you're you're limited to now, Cork and Cal, I think has a really good bar program. Gray's is it's just the ones that I typically mid. go to. And I'm just saying, like, I feel like if you oh, be joyful, I could do that, which one. is also Gray's, though. Right. But if you went to a place in, I feel like you would love going to get cocktails. Where? If you expanded your horizons, went to places with really good cocktails. Well, I'm about to tell you and where look I, and look how excited you are oh, that you went and had good cocktails. Oh, it was so good. So at, at amendment 16, 18, 18, what was the 16th one? I'm not sure. Okay. Was it like, it was probably Obamacare, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Okay. Well, the 18th one, uh, it's like the speakeasy thing. It's oh like, no. Bad one. Oh, God. That was the income tax amendment. Oh, no. Not a good one. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I still don't know how that works. All I know is that they take it out of your check. The um, so, you, so you go to the back. It's in downtown Franklin here in Franklin, Tennessee. It's just off the roundabout. Uh, there's a mellow mushroom. But in the back of the mellow mushroom, there's this like little like old school looking like power thing. You know, like how you let's turn the lights on, boom, and you turn it on, and then they come out. 
get the number of your party, then you you go in. And it's a cool vibe. Like it's almost I feel like it's almost there. Like it, I like the the theatrical like yeah. the red theater curtain like it's yeah. kind of what it was back then. But like I just need a it, it it just seems like it's the the decor is is too it's one off. It's too current. <laughs> okay. It's kind of in this weird like. Like they didn't go all in speakeasy. Right. They they have like, Steve. I want to see you know like leather chair like yeah. dark leather chairs like they have like velvet curtains yeah or velvet chairs yeah yeah oh yeah and it's and they kind of look contemporary like oh, okay. it's it's like it's a, it's a weird I, I I don't know it's almost there is what I'm saying yeah which they used to be in West Haven. And that's where our buddy Zach helped oh, work yeah. for a while. Yes, and um, and I had been to it in West Haven, enjoyed the cocktails there, but they moved from West Haven, which at West Haven it really, I feel like the decor was more speakeasy inside, but with none of the outside. Like you just walked in, right? Like right. there was no. It was, a, it was basically in a strip mall. I mean, it was in a shopping center, right? Yeah, I don't know if you could. I don't know if the fine people of West Haven would be fine with you calling anything there a strip mall. Well, that's what it is. Okay, it is shopping plaza, dude. And they have no yards. They're like, oh, we're West Haven people. At least Joe B has a yard, even though it is fake grass. <laughs> he does have a yard. Can't wait for the text. He does have a yard. However, like everybody in West Haven is like, oh, we're so rich. We live in West Haven. It's like you have no yard. Yeah. You send your kids to a school that's like 30 feet away, like you're in a weird village in the in the middle of like an unknown country. And then you've got your liquor store right there. And in the same shopping center, you had a, you had a bar, which in sounds fine. But it's in a shopping center. There's also boutiques. There's also uh, ice cream shop. There's like it's not like oh they've got an adult, there's not like adult a adult only pool. There's not like a State Farm office and a dry cleaner. Maybe there is a dry cleaner. There maybe I don't know. I just don't think of it as a strip mall. Yeah. That well, I mean, you walk into West Haven and the first thing I see is we buy gold. <laughs> So, they don't have a We Buy Gold in West Haven. <laughs> they do. They do not. <laughs> they, they do not have well, a We they, Buy Gold. Well, a lot of them bought gold a long time ago, and now they live in West Haven. <laughs> okay. I don't know. We Bought Gold is what the, the community is called. Yeah. Um. So I, I had a cocktail at this speakeasy. The first one I had was called Severance Pay. Yeah. Uh, it's improved, Im, an improved, improved whiskey cocktail. Okay, they have a typo. No, I think there's a comma. So I think it's an improved whiskey cocktail, but they improved upon it. Oh, okay. It's an improved, yeah. improved whiskey cocktail with suggestions of dried fruit, candied nuts, and a rye forward served up package perfect for those who enjoy Manhattans but want something a little well more. It was very much like a Manhattan. Yeah, but a little well more. It was a little more. I, I, you know, honestly, it was... Um, it it felt a little sweeter. Okay. It felt. It, I wonder what was in it. Let's see. It said Wild Turkey One Hundred and One, Luxard, Luxardo Maraschino, Dry Vermouth, Chinar, uh, Peychaud's Bitters, Lafroig. Had Scotch in it. Smoky Scotch. Cool. And orange peel. Did you get some of that uh, Scotchy Smoky? I did not. Yeah. Well, it's in it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like a real boy now. Nope. And then I ended up having <laughs> this text thread is amazing. Where was the? Did you have the old pal? Oh, here we go. No. Then I followed it up with. I I had no I I had no intent I had no concept of this drink. It was just called Prohibition Coffee. Yeah. So you think maybe like Irish coffee kind of? Yeah. Thought. I yeah. was like, yeah, that's gonna be super cool, dude. It it's it's chilled. It's. All right, it, this this creamy cold brew cocktail combines a triple cask Irish whiskey with notes of spice, tobacco, and vanilla for a perfect after dinner drink. So, what's in that one? Let me see. It is slain Irish slain whiskey, Irish whiskey, coffee, coffee concentrate, concentrate, vanilla syrup, allspice dram. Love me some allspice dram, tobacco bitters. I need to get some of those. Heavy cream and grated nutmeg. That sounds incredible. Um, heavy though. It was. Was it heavy? It was light. Okay. 
It was, I mean, yes. I mean, probably it had heavy cream in it. it. It had heavy cream in it, but it was, it was, uh, Starbucks has no idea what they're doing. Well, they're also not making cocktails. Well, I'm just saying this was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it was, sounds it was, good. It was really good. No, I was like, they used the big, um, I square cube in it. It kind of had this froth over the top and then the yeah. grated nutmeg was kind of on top. That and, froth is from the heavy cream when they shook it. Yeah. Right. Right. It's effectively whipping the cream. But then the, it was like, it, it, it had a lot of coloring because of the dark coffee. Yeah. It's, hidden the ice cube with the cream and then the flakes or whatever. It just was like, it just kept, I mean, every sip is like, Oh man, this kind of feels like a new experience. Every yeah. Time. That's great. It was really good. Um, my wife gets those all the time there, but she also gets espresso martinis. Those are very in right now. They're so in right now. And honestly, I kind of like them too. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's like a elevated Red Bull vodka. Hmm. it's like it's like for people like we probably shouldn't be drinking red bull and vodka anymore what can we do <laughs> espresso man yeah it's 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 an elevated pour for middle-aged women yeah and men 100 percent. it's just oh man oh you don't want a vodka red bull well i've got a espresso <laughs> I, wanna, martini. I want you to go to a bar grease and order vodka red bull sub espresso Oh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, can I get a vodka Red Bull, but without Red Bull? Can you sub espresso, espresso for the Red Bull? Yeah. yeah. That's a bit. I feel like we need to hidden camera it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like when people order, like, DoorDash McDonald's and stuff, but, like, effectively order, like, just a bun. Like, they say, hold, hold, <laughs> yeah. hold, hold, like, all the other stuff. And see, then you're like, what did we get? And, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the – speaking of, this is so great – have you seen the guy that <laughs> orders something ridiculous? Like it's one of those situations, like he's ordering something and then he's like, yeah, okay. So, so what's in that again? And then they thought, well, it's, but, and then he just drives off while they're, <laughs> while they're, while they're explaining it, their faces are just like, what the heck? Like, yeah. There's, it's, it's really funny. There's one where every video is him. There's a, a bit like that where a guy calls, he's calling in an order for like a salad, but as he's, he's making substitutions and everything and he's turning the salad into their loaded fries that they have on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, and they finally catch on. They're like, Oh, so you want the loaded fries? He goes, well, it's a salad, so I don't <laughs> yeah, know. I think I've seen <laughs> it's so that. so funny. I think I've seen that. <laughs> like, you can call it with that if you want, but it's a salad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you want to go to the 15? Let's do it, man. Yeah. Hit the music. What do we... Oh, yeah. All right. And we're back from the 15. Some say we never left, Will. In fact, we did it. Yeah, you know what we're doing today? We're completing the circle. Yeah, we're going high line, high tide, highly anticipated, the last tie of the high line, high line, line. reviews. Yeah. So if you'll remember, we from high line, this is the fourth in a series because we've been going through their inspired spirits uh we did their straight whiskey we did their bourbon whiskey and we did their american whiskey and now this is the final one as you should do in any tasting taste the rye last so we're drinking their triple rye dude like he's like he's so good at this guys he's so good so what we've got here is uh, a very unique thing this is a 97 proof it says it is an extraordinary whiskey with the sweetness of stone fruit, hints of baking spice and pepper, as you would expect from a traditional rye, and hints of milk chocolate from a high malt barley content on the finish. Combination comes to life, creating a truly unique and exceptional whiskey that stands apart from the wet rest. It's a blend of a five-year, five-and-a-half-year, and a ten-year rye. I will say this. Whoever does their tasting notes – has done an incredible job. They have, yeah. Like I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, they're totally right. Yeah, this is this is correct. So what's the what's the SRP on this one? Because the we had one that was like fifty dollars, yeah. eighty, seventy dollars. This is, I mean, this is 
pretty in the pocket for okay. an elevated pour, I get or an elevated bottle, but it's it's eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. Um, for that price point, it's ninety seven proof. You know that already kind of is like that interesting to me. What is inter- the most interesting thing to me is it's three. It's a blend of three watt rye whiskey. Yeah, one is five years old. Right. One is five and a half. Right. And one's ten. Yeah. Like why? Like why why worry about the five and a half well it's Just probably like a it's blend probably, of five and ten year old whiskey i don't think it's three of the same mash bills oh. that's what i'm thinking because it's a okay. triple rye i'm thinking it's three unique ryes in one okay. um okay and that's what especially where it says the high malt barley content on the finish so i think one of the rye is probably a higher malt rye or maybe even a malted rye, um, even though high malt barley. So there is barley in it. But right. that's I think it's triple rye. It is three okay. unique that makes spills. Sense. And so that's why one was five years, one was five and a half, and one was ten. Yeah, I was just like, why mention the five and a half one? That makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's my, my guess. It doesn't explicitly say that, but it, the context clues are there for it being a triple rye. Um, are these, are these tasting notes the same? This says, well, then I do have another section of tasting notes. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you have a lively aroma of baking spice, brown sugar, and caramel. That's the nose no, and aroma. No, but that sounds, that sounds nice. Yeah. That's the nose and aroma is a lively aroma of baking spice, brown sugar, and caramel palette, an elegant and complex rye with bold notes of vanilla, plum, dark cherry, and earthy pepper. All right. Hang on. Read the nose again. Lively aroma of baking spice, brown sugar, and caramel. Let's figure this out. I mean, I get the baking spice. I get the baking spice and a little bit of the brown sugar, but I get some grassiness too, like kind of a bright, almost citrusy, yeah. fresh cut grass. I can. I mean, I can. I. I can. I can feel the malt. I'm not getting caramel on the nose. No, 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 no. I'm not getting anywhere close to it. No. So palate, let's see, an elegant and complex rye with bold notes of vanilla, plum, dark cherry, and earthy pepper. Let's go for it. Yeah. So like, I, I feel like a, I would be smelling like a vanilla leaf, not like vanilla. Ooh. You're in, you're making me curious. That is great mouthfeel. A lot of saliva production from that. I get the earthy pepper. I get the dark cherry. Yeah. Earthy 100%. pepper is spot on. It's spot on. Lingering finish, lingering light pepper finish with a subtle undertone of milk chocolate. I get some from some of the maltiness. There is some of that maltiness that is there on the end. Uh for sure. It and when I'm they say more of like subtle a undertone, subtle undertone of milk chocolate, it's very subtle. Yeah. It's not a prominent. I'm getting a more of like a like a cinnamon thing at the end. I like this. No, it's good. This is this is good. It's good. Uh, we're gonna have to circle back on the price situation. Mm. Overall, here's what excites me about what they've done. None of these tasted like something you've had before. No, and there is so much. No homogenized whiskey on the market right now. Yeah. That it's, it's not, that's what's taken a lot of the fun out of it for me is that you can buy a bottle of whiskey and it's not bad, but you can also buy that same bottle of whiskey for $20 less and $20 more because oh, it's, it's all, yeah. they all taste the same or a hundred dollars more. Right. And so when there's a, a, a group like the folks at Highline, they're doing something different, which we have no idea who they, they are. Right, Greece has had these samples for a daggum year. They may be out of business by now. We, ha- I, yeah, I, I don't think they are be available. <laughs> I don't know like, if they are. Do we but know? No, we've done no more research. No, no we looked up their website. Still, we remains. did. We did. Yeah, it, it's that's not even it. That's something different. Under embargo. Oh, that's the Eric Church one, which I love. Outsider spirit. So I'm I'm very pleased with everything they've done. Some yeah. of the prices we've said, and, and you can go back and listen to the last four episodes or last three episodes, including this one would be four, but they're, they're, they're just so different mm-hmm. than anything on the market that it gives you the nod to be like, I, I mean, even if you don't agree with all the prices, you know, it's going to be something different than what you're going to buy. 
There's so many things that you get home and you're not disappointed because it's bad. You're disappointed because it's the same. There's no discovery. Right. So when you can drink something and say, this is different and unique, even if it's not the best whiskey I've ever had, I feel like we've all had really good whiskey. We've all had things that are never going to be surpassed at this point. If you've been into this hobby for any amount of time, there's always going to be that one pour that you're never going to forget because of the people you were with and the moment where you shared it and the flavor and the complexity and the rarity and all those things that add up an equation to something special. But what's frustrating is going to the liquor store and not wanting to buy anything because you're just convinced everything is going to taste like everything else. And so why not just get a bottle of old granddad bottle and bond? Why not just spend $20 on some wild Turkey, know what you're going to get because the discovery process has been so hampered because of the creativity is gone. That's what's frustrated me the most about whiskey. These last really couple years now is the source stuff, they're not doing anything different to. It's all turning out the same. Or they're finishing it. like, Or they're finishing it, and it's wine. boring. It's so stupid. boring. Do something fun. Make me excited. Do something like Highline's doing. And like this is something we put off for a year because we thought it was probably going to be just the same old stuff. I'm not even afraid of samples being bad anymore. I thought it was just going to taste young. I like just corn. I just thought it was going to taste like everything else. And that's the thing is that like most whiskey coming out now doesn't taste bad. But that the danger of getting something tasting bad was also kind of some of the fun. Some of the risk you'd take. Mm-hmm. Now you don't even have that risk. You just have... I just spent $60 to be bored. I'm just going to make an old fashioned. I'm going to change the flavor of this because it's boring. Mm. That's what frustrates me about the state of the whiskey. Dude, honestly, I feel like that's my favorite rant you've ever gone and on. I know, and it just happened. It just, I just started feeling it. But that's, but that's what makes me excited about them. And like, as I think back about those ones that we had and even the criticism of like, that's too expensive. But then I'm like, yeah, but maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's worth it because it tastes different. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a buddy over and you show them this label, instead of saying, look, it's Highline, it tastes like every other MGP you've ever had. And you pour it for him. It's like, what'd you spend on it? A hundred dollars. It's like, okay, just like every other MGP you've ever had at this point. No, they'll taste it. And even if they don't love it, they're going to be like, I've never had that before. Mm -hmm. I've never had that. So cheers to you, Highline. Rant over. And this is like, I don't know. Like, the, the, finally, someone did something that is different. And they, do different. And they didn't have to age it on like a river or a lake, <laughs> yeah, or mesh it with a cabernet, right? The, a cabernet uh, barrel that was sautéed on the <laughs> front porch of Gordon Ramsay's home. You know what I mean? Like, well, it, it, it's a. It's the most creative we can get. Well, then let's uh, toast it. But honestly, it's like, that's one of the reasons why most of what I'm drinking these days are either like four rows of small batch or old granddad bottle and bond that are just standard good profiles that I know I like old Forrester hunter proof or I drink a lot of leapers fork because I believe in Lee Kennedy. I love what they're doing out there. And you know what? That's your splurge. It tastes different. It tastes different. It's got a different recipe. It's got a higher malt content and it tastes like nothing else on the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hard truth. That's another one. Their rye. That's a sweet mash rye. It's like an $80 bottle is worth every penny because it tastes different. Um, so this just excites me because I, I'm, I'm, I find myself really constrained in about what I even want to drink these days because I'm like, I just know I like the way these taste and they don't taste like everything else. That's going to do it for the show today, guys. <laughs> buy bar or pass. Just buy everything Highline's doing because it's different. I don't know. Is this worth $80? I don't know. I don't know if it's worth $80 or not. It's probably a $60 bottle to me. 
Yeah. This tastes like a $60 whiskey. It's unique. But it's to Will's different. point, buy it. 97 proof. A great mouthfeel for a 97 proof. Yeah, whiskey. it's it's got some it, it's got It some doesn't character. taste thin. It's got a lot of character. Is this my favorite rye? No. This is not the best rye I've ever had. Is this unique and, and fun? Yep. It is. Are we proud of these people that we have 100%. no idea who they I are? I want to shake their hands. Wait, it's I know it's it's, it's a female owned, owned yeah, female owned women company. ran. He dropped the card, but it's on there. Yeah. All right. So here's the deal. Here's here's who we are. Headquarters in Dexter, Michigan. Michigan. Yep. Woman owned, women run. Whiskey enthusiast, mother of four, and former pediatric surgical PA CEO Christy Lauer collaborates with award-winning distillers and renowned blending expert nationally to create perfection. I feel like she's like Natalie. Yeah, awesome. We're putting putting out putting out Natalie vibes here. Yeah. Tastings room tasting rooms opening in Dexter and Plymouth, Michigan this fall. So that was <laughs> maybe six years ago. No, that was la that was last fall. Okay. hundred I guess. Discover your awe. Life is much richer when it's filled with the truly awesome moment. Okay. Uh, we could have re redone that one. That one didn't hit. Well, cheers to them. Cheers the to them. Yeah. Because I like it. You see her? Yeah. I mean, she seems like a boss. She seems like, yeah, she seems like a, like a, like a fawn weaver. Like... Katie Arbor, director of Some, operations. Like they're just going to take over something. Mixologist and hospitality. Well, yeah. I mean, this is, I, I like them. I want to go to Michigan just to shake their hands. Right. Thank you. If, even if you never hear this, thank you. Don't care. Good stuff. Good job. Thanks for doing something different and unique instead of yeah. just putting some six-year MGP in a bottle and saying that your great uncle's wife discovered it under under a, a, a limestone quarry <laughs> and 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 extrapolated out the recipe coaxed it out our first barrel run we took the rock and chair uh wooden curve thing and put it inside the yeah, barrel. Yeah, this is uh, aged with rocking chair staves. <laughs> Thank you to my, all of our sponsors, that, Cracker Barrel, yeah, that my Danny's. grandma that my grandma sat in. <laughs> Only batch one has grandma's rocking chair. The rest of them just have varnished toxicity from Cracker Barrel. Sorry, I got salty tonight. Forgive me, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. I like it. Uh, I like hey, it. It takes would, pressure off of me. If you want to hang out with us, go to patreon.com slash the podcast and join Town Hall or Virtual Bar Night. We have a great time over there. We do them after uh, we record these on Monday nights. So it, it's always a good time. We really get to know people well. We learn about what they're drinking, what they're doing, and, and really just uh, it's a family. It really is a family. Um, the, the folks that we've met through Virtual Bar Night and through Town Hall – have become some of the most indispensable friends of our life. I've got a lot of dispensable friends, not these. They, I've got one dispensable friend right here. But if he's not here, then I can't really have these indispensable friends. So he, by proxy, is indispensable. So it's a weird thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he found a loophole uh, to, to be able to yeah, stay it's in. It's called biz. having my name on an operating agreement <laughs> that the bank has photocopies of. Yeah. That's the only reason. <laughs> That's right, the only folks. reason. Thank you so much for listening. Check us out. Like I said, patreon.com slash the podcast. And we don't know Jack. But we'll drink it. Love y'all mean it.